you can start manipulating muscle tissue to lay differently. And I confirmed this with Jay and I was like, is this really true? And he's like, you can actually bring, you know, their back looks wide already. You can bring an extra inch or two to their back wow. and make it look even wider. Welcome to this week's Escape Your Limits podcast. Our guest today has turned recovery into an art form, using it not only to treat physical conditions such as fascia dysfunction and muscle knots, but also to impact mental well being and improve body aesthetics. Our guest is based in Las Vegas at the infamous Dragon's Lair Gym owned by the former Mr. Olympia, Flex Lewis, where he runs his growing torture room massage therapy business. That's how it all started. After everybody telling me no, that I don't fit their business, I'm gonna create my own. I think I finally made my stamp here in Las Vegas as a torture room guy. <laughs> people know me here now, people know me. Energy, I, I believe, is very real. Energy in people's bodies is very real. And that's the foundation of the torture room is understanding energy and vibrational frequency. Body is very unique. It tells you what's wrong with you all the time, all the time. Massage therapy, not only, you know, it, brings a lot of that blood flow in, but it also cleans and detoxifies muscle tissue. Please enjoy this week's episode with Miguel Guajardo, AKA the torture guy. Great, well we're here with the torture room guy who hasn't got a name, is that right? I don't have a name, <laughs> but for those who want to know my name, it's Miguel Guajardo. Thanks. So AKA the torture room guy. Well, thanks for inviting me here. Thanks for fixing my shoulder. Uh, yeah, just, yeah. I feel a lot better. I, got, I'm, I must have been, I'm painful where you, you kind of did some stuff in my chest, but my shoulder feels really good. <laughs> as long as it can move, you can, it's great, so. How long did it take you to sort of figure out how to feel? Did, did, how, how did they teach you that kind of stuff? Well, in, in massage school, they teach you just the basics. They don't even teach you the true dynamics of the, like what massage is really about. They teach you how to flow through massage which is uh, a full uh, full body massage. And they teach you how to like work on the leg, work on the foot, and then hit the full body in one hour. Just the flow of massage. It's after you go to school, after you finish the program and get your cert certification, then you take additional classes and courses to really see which avenue of massage therapy you wanna go, which there's so many. And uh, that lets you, you know, really understand where you fit in to the massage world. So. You were in prisons. Yes. How, yeah. how, how did you go from being in prison <laughs> to, to helping people feel better? Yeah, I was, I was a CO. I was a corrections officer for 12 years. And that, that job tore me down. Uh, mentally, more than anything, I became so antisocial. And I didn't want to hang around with friends or just be out in public at all. I just... And uh, I was in a really serious relationship that time, committed relationship, and I was like, I don't even want to go out to dinner. Like, and uh, I told her one day I didn't want to do my job, and I was like, I don't know if I want to do this for the rest of my life. And she said, Well, quit, and why don't you try massage therapy? <laughs> man, I, I'm like, man, you got to be smoking crack. <laughs> like, why would I want to be touching people? Like, why? Because the, the career I had previous to that was I was a soldier. I was in the military. I was in the army. So I was always a very in defense mode. So why would I want to touch people? But at the time, you know, I, I was into fitness. I tried bodybuilding a few times, you know. Um, and she was like, well, you do bodybuilding. You're in the gym. So maybe it, it might come to you. And after she badgered me, I quit my job in a day and signed up for the program and you know, nine years later, here I am as a torture room guy. What, what, did, she, did she have some sort of, were you, were you kind of really good at massaging her and she had this insight or what, no, what was? No, what, <laughs> no, I never massaged her, I didn't. Because that's I, a strange I, thing, like there's a number of things you, would, you could say, yeah. you know, being in the military, being in the prisons, but you know, that's very <laughs> left field really. It is it? very left field, that's why I told her, I'm like, I'm not doing that. But uh, she thought it would help me break, break out of my shell since I, you know, just shaking hands with somebody, somebody new was, um, uh, like, I didn't even want to do that. It was hard for me just from being in, uh, working in uh, the prison system. You know, I just, it was, I, I started realizing that I wasn't trusting people anymore. And that's when I knew that it wasn't good for my mental health. And yeah, they pay good money, but that's not enough money if um, it's just ruining you as a person. 
So she was like, uh, you know, you'll never have to be in a fight ever again. Uh, you're going to go into a place where people are happy to see you and you're going to make people feel better. And never in my mind did I think that I would be able to do that. I don't know if I make people feel better being called the torture room, but <laughs> that's how she sold it to me. And, um, and then it would help me just break me out of my shell to talk to people more. And I was like, uh, I, guess I, could, I guess I could give it a shot. And um, I, was, I was actually pretty resistive. And even though I joined the program, the first uh, two months, I was like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. But once we hit the third month in the school program is when you actually start the practice of massage. You are, after reading a couple books and learning a few things, they let you practice on a partner. You pick a partner in class. And it really started coming to me. Things started clicking right away. And it, I was happy doing it. It was like, I was like, what is this? It, it, I started unlocking like new, like new things in my mind. I was like, this works with this. Things are just clicking to me. And I was like, it comes second nature to me. And I never knew that being in the healthcare field would do that. And I was like, I actually, I actually enjoy this. Yeah. So when did you decide that you were going to take that and, and create a business? Was that a, a, a sort of just a next step or? No, I, I, when I wanted to create a business was when two, when two other people fired me. So my first job, I worked in a spa after I got my license. I'm like, I'm just gonna look for a job. I have my certificate and uh, worked in a spa. After a few months, they fired me. They said, you're not a good fit. I, they're like, we can't book you. It's not gonna happen. Why, is- why was that? Like you obviously, for those of you who are just listening on audio, like you are quite an intimidating looking character. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I say it was all image. He, right. Like owners would come up to me and they're like, I can't sell this. The way you look, <laughs> you you look intimidating. And, and, and realizing that I had just came out of the prison system, I had this demeanor about me of how I walked, how I talked to people, looking them square in the eye with this look of like, you know, maybe intimidation, I don't know, but they're like, you're not a good fit for us. We're going to have to let you go, you know, because they find you your clients and people would see me and they're like, I'm going to cancel my session. I don't want him working on me. He looks like he's going to break me. So got, got fired out of that job, went to another job. And after two months, he fired me. And I was like, was it the same kind of thing? No, it was, um, it was a chiropractic office. And I thought, okay, maybe this is more medical setting. Maybe I might fare well here. But after two months, he fired me. And I was like, man, I don't, I don't think uh, I did the right career choice. <laughs> and I, I buckled down, brainstormed, and I'm like, I think I'm just going to start a business. And um, that's how it all started. After everybody telling me no, that I don't fit their business. I'm like, I'll create my own. And was wh- wh- what did you end up? finding did you, did you come straight here how did, how did you meet flex how did i meet oh man that's a long story but uh, that's a great story flex flex was actually showing my instagram account um i believe by uh, an athlete that's out there in his gym floor and at the time dragon's layer was looking for a massage therapist to be in-house and they were looking for applications. Somebody showed him my Instagram, said, hey, look at this guy. He's working with uh, people in the IFBB already. So um, after speaking with the general manager of the gym, Justin Dees, um, got invited here for a weekend. I got to work with Flex, the general manager, things like that. It's kind of like a dry run. It's like, what's your skill? And um, they didn't even ask me for my resume. <laughs> I think I had the credibility because of my social media. and. Um, after one session, Flex was like, do you want to move your business here? And I was scared. I was scared to say yes. Where were you based at the time? I was based in Washington State. Right. And yeah, that's where I came from. And for those of you maybe not from the U.S., that's, that's quite a way from, it's not, it's not kind of like, it's not a short drive, is it? Not a short, I've done the drive. It's a 17-hour drive, <laughs> but it's a two-hour flight. <laughs> so, but I actually drove down here. Um, I, I like road trips, so I drove down here. Uh, it helps me get my my thoughts in order, things like that. But, but yeah, I came down from Washington State, met up with Flex, the GM, did some sessions. They got to see my skills. Flex uh, gave me that invite. He said, I think you you do really well at the Dragon's Lair. And I was scared. I was, it was a scary moment in what, my life. What, why, why was that? Um, 
expectations because or? because a it's flex lewis the expectation b it's the opportunity a door opened up for me that it's like you either walk through the door or you don't and that's that could either make or break your idea of a business and i knew nobody in, in las vegas and after already being settled in washington state i had an abundance of clients i never had to market anymore i was comfortable there all i had to do was show up to work and so that's why I was scared. You know, do I leave where I'm comfortable and go to a place that's unknown? It's scary. So. Introducing the next big thing in functional training, the Escape Barrow, a revolutionary training tool that combines a loaded farmer's carry with a sled push to develop hip, grip, and core strength. Developed in partnership with Pete Holman, inventor of the TRX Rip Trainer and Nautilus Glute Drive, the Escape Barrow can be rolled, pushed, dragged and carried. The Escape Barrow packs a punch with an impressive load capacity of 440 pounds and with a two-stage galvanized paint covering process, it's also ideal for outdoor use. So head over to escapefitness.com forward slash barrow. That's escapefitness.com forward slash barrow to find out more. Enjoy the rest of this episode. What What do you think? What What what, do you, what gave you personally that nudge to say, yeah, you know, step step through the door of opportunity and see where it takes you? It was It was actually having a conversation with Miss Olympia, uh, Missy Truscott. So she was she was a big name client of mine up in Washington State. And uh, we, uh, when I got back home, I had a follow up session with Missy Truscott. And she's like, hey, I hear you're talking to Flex. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I don't know what to do. And, you know, she kind of calmed me down a little bit. And she was like, I think it'd be really good for your business to go. And I'm like, but I'm really, I'm really comfortable here. You know, I have all my clients. I have you here. You know, she promotes me on her social media whenever we do work. Um, and she was like, I think Flex will definitely shoot your business to a higher level that you would even that you would never expect and i was like you really think i should go and she's like do it and i was like okay so after a few weeks went by flex and i started communicating again he gave me another invite to the dragon slayer and now i'm here how long you been here uh it's going to be approaching two years now so i think i finally made my stamp here in las vegas as a torturing <laughs> guy people know me here now people know me which is amazing what about brand? Because you've got you, you've got an interesting brand. I'm, uh, it's, it's probably one that kind of works or doesn't work. Like clearly, there's some play, people and places where you, you, it's intimidating and, and not inviting. But you, you know, you've managed to figure that out. What, where, when did that come? Did that come when you got to Vegas and you rounded it out, or was that something that you were working on prior to coming here, which is why probably Flex was a, was attracted to it. Uh, the, the torch room name came, uh, it, it came before I came here to Vegas. Um, I, I, I thought really hard about creating the torch room and, uh, the backstory behind it is I was homeless when I created the torch room. Like life just took a turn for the worst in 2019, in January of 2019. I lost everything. I had a business before the torch room and lost that, lost my home. Um, I have a son, he, he went back to live with his mom for a couple months while I was trying to get myself back on my feet and just living out of my car. And um, things could have went really, really bad in my life, but they turned out really, really good. I still knew I wanted to do massage therapy, but I couldn't even give away a massage, even if it was for free. That's how bad life got for me. And um, I, I had a look at myself why things weren't working good. So yeah, I was angry at the world for a minute. I was angry at friends that didn't help me out at the moment. Um, but then after that faded, I started looking at myself. Why did I get here? Do you still want to do this? And uh, I really drew it to myself and to meditation, prayer. And I went back to the books and learning more and more about not massage therapy, but the human body. So I figure if I can understand the human body, then I can learn to enhance my massage technique. And after seven months, I created something called the torture room in my mind. 
And the day I had one opportunity to make it go live, I, I took a chance on life. I went for broke. I had nothing else to lose. I was already at the bottom. And uh, somebody, somebody gave me one chance. And I'm like, I'm opening up a torch room in, inside your business. And uh, they thought I was crazy. And I was like, well, I got nothing to lose. So, and that's when, it's, that's when it happened. And what was that? How did that opportunity come about? Oh, man, that was, that's a very emotional day for me. Because I was, it's like approaching seven months being homeless, living in my car. I really didn't know what else to do. Um, I was kind of giving up. And uh, I was like, maybe this just isn't for me. I'm trying. And as I said, I got into meditation and prayer. And uh, one day I was just praying. And I was like, I don't, I, I did everything I could. I don't know what else I could do. I've been, I spent time in Barnes and Nobles reading book after book because it was free to just sit in there for hours. I had nowhere to go. And uh, one day I was, I still remember, I was just sitting in a parking lot of a Target and I, I just broke down and I'm like, I'm done. I'm like, I'll just look for another job and go back to the, to the workforce. And no lie, five minutes later, I got a phone call from somebody saying, hey, we ju- we move, we're new into your area. We're a supplement company called Eco Nutrition and we have a lot of space in our in our business and we'd like to bring you into to do massage therapy in our business and i'm like a supplement company i i I don't think that meshes well but they're like swing by in the morning and um, you know take a look at the room if you like it we want to offer it to you i did they wanted four hundred dollars and i'm like i don't have that kind of money i'm kind of tight funds and the owner just happened to be there i talked to him for a few minutes and he's like, you seem like a really nice guy. He seems like, you seem like a good person. It's like, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give you the room for free, but as soon as you start making money, you're gonna owe plus back pay, whatever, whatever you do owe. And I'm like, that's fair. And he's like, we're gonna do a grand opening next weekend, uh, get with my manager. She called you, um, let her know the details. We'll promote you on our page. And uh, hey, we, we'd love to have you here. And uh, I told the manager I'm opening up a torture room. (laughs) And she thought I was crazy. And uh, she is now a very good friend of mine. Her name's Nayeli. And uh, we're now really good friends. And she thought I was crazy for opening up a torture room. And uh, the first day I opened, I made $2,000. The first day. And I hadn't seen that much money in a long time. (laughs) And I showed up to work the next day and made $800. I showed up to work the next day and made $1,200. And uh, I wanted a hot meal so bad. So I went to Applebee's. <laughs> by, the end of that, for, by the end of that week, I had my, had my apartment back, you know? And uh, my son was back living with me. And you know, now, now I'm here in Las Vegas working with some of the coolest people from all over the world. It's just amazing to me. What were some of the lessons when like, you obviously, you, you clearly got to a very low point yeah. um, by anyone's standard, really. Um, what, what were some of the lessons that you took from that period in your life in terms of getting there and, and what you learned about yourself in terms of what you had to do to get out? I had to learn to check my ego. It, and I think that's really what happened is I had a very big ego when I had created, when I had a massage business before the torture room, which the, the dynamics of it was totally different than the torture room. But, you know, people at times were praising my skills. They're like, you're really good at this. You're really good at this. So my ego got really big. And, um, you know, I'm a godly man. And uh, I think God checked in my ego and I'll tell you how bad my ego was, is there were times where people would walk in my room and they're like, hey, I have a shoulder issue. And I would say, that's okay, I'll fix it. And they're like, well, I haven't told you what's wrong with it yet. And I said, it's okay, I'll just take care of it. Just go ahead, lay on the table. And I wouldn't even pay attention. I wouldn't know, was it because you injured it? Was there a car accident? Was there, uh, did you have a, like, I didn't know anything, but that's how much my ego was. And I checked in my, that's what I learned how to check in my ego. So now when I talk to clients, new ones, I, I love to hear their story. What happened? Why? What's going on? What's your daily activity like? 
And it's also things that I learned as I was recreating myself as a massage therapist to understand the human body. And that's how I figured out how to understand what I call muscle vibration, not just muscle tone, but muscle vibration. And muscle carries a different vibration when it's tense, when it's tight, when it's scarred, when it's traumatized, when it's injured, when it's healing, it all carries a different tension. And that will help me decipher how to approach each session. So what is muscle vibration? Is that is that something that you feel you've probably got some sort of um, uh, talent to, to, to pick up on? Is, is it, is it, is it, do you think that's, that's, can anyone see, feel the muscle vibration or is that something you've kind of tuned yourself into being able to figure out, would you say? I, I think a lot of people out in the world do it. Um, I had to learn that skill and then enhance the skill after that. And I believe that very much with massage. It's very intuitive work. And it's the level of your intuitiveness of your own body to the person you're working with on how well you can understand what's going on with muscle vibration. So I know there's people out in the world doing it and it's, it's a very difficult skill to acquire and you have to be very patient. Mm. But now that I've been doing it for quite some time, I can pretty much pick it up within seconds. As soon as I start palpation, Within seconds, I pretty much know exactly where to start, where it's coming from, and how to approach it. Yeah, the reason I asked, we did a we did an interview with a gentleman last week called Dan Metcalf, and they they had this machine. It's quite an expensive machine. It basically puts some sensors on your on your wrists here, and it tracks heart heart rate, um, okay. and then it creates a number of different measurements that all across your body, like your internal organs, your external organs, and I don't, I don't know exactly how it works, but we did mm -hmm. it, I did it, my wife did it, and my two kids. Yeah. And the level of accuracy that this machine was, was phenomenal, like you yeah. just, you just, you're almost like, how does it know that level of detail? And it, <laughs> it kind of got me thinking, you know, obviously you've, it, you can touch a muscle and you've got, you know, it's tight or it's not, I get that, but it, it made me kind of think, well, is, is there any, is there other, we're all sort of energy and, and he was talking about the cells and what's in the cells and, mm -hmm. and, and this kind of stuff. And, and I suppose that there's, there's, there's clearly other energies that we can't see and necessarily recognize, but, but everything in your, like you just, you just gave me this example in my, my shoulder was hurting and it was like my, my pec and a number of other muscles that are all connected. Mm -hmm. so, so I guess everything's kind of connected from your, from your head to your toes. And, and I suppose there's, there, there may be vibrations and frequencies or that, that you call mm -hmm. them that, that could have blockages. And, and so what you say makes sense. And my question back to you then is, is, do you feel that some of it is being able to pick up on energies that uh, within people's bodies and stuff that's going on that may cause them to be all crooked and, and messed up that, that may not be sort of obvious when you just, uh, you know, when, when you look and look at something straight on. Yeah. I mean, energy, I, I believe, is very real. Energy in people's bodies is very real. And that's the foundation of the torch room is understanding energy and vibrational frequency. Um, this machine that you described, how it reads the body so uniquely and almost so precisely, I would have to... That's science, and I would have to accredit that to blood flow. It right. reads blood flow, and if you yes, can, and think. if you can understand blood flow, you can understand that um, you can start to understand why certain muscle groups tire more than others, are tighter than others, or are more hypoxic than others. And hypoxic meaning it's low in oxygen consumption levels, and oxygen binds to red blood cells and then goes to everywhere in the body. So this machine can probably pick that up. And, uh, but understanding that, you, you can pick that up just through touch itself. So this machine that can create something that we already have, the skills that I already acquire, um, it's pretty unique, it's pretty cool. I mean, it knows that people, everybody can use that. Um, but, you know, this is another reason why I decided to go back to the basics to understand the body all the way down to blood cell level to enhance my massage technique. So it's more than just 
putting lotion. We don't have like a magical way of rubbing lotion on that makes everything disappear. That would be amazing. I think I'd be a billionaire if that were, if that were to happen. But it's understanding why, you know, blood flows in that direction. And, you know, because then you have to understand types of muscles. You have fast twitch muscle groups and you have slow twitch muscle groups. And then you have muscle groups that are a combination of both. So that's going to determine uh, how much oxygen it takes in and um, how the body reacts also during action. How do you think the mind affects the body from your side? I, we, I've, spoke, I've talked quite a bit about it recently in terms of sport and how, uh, uh, you know, if you're an athlete, then yeah. when you get to the elite level, there's yeah. genetically most people are on a kind of similar level, you know, in yeah. any sport, and the differences are very, very small. And the big, I, I think I heard that the diff, you know, eighty percent of the difference is mental um, in terms of your performance. We were chatting about UFC and boxing just just mm -hmm. before we press play. And how do you, do you recognize any connection between what's going on with somebody mentally, and then how if if they have an issue, whether it's back pain or anything like that do you, have, have you noticed any connection between mental things that are going on in life and then how that manifests in certain things within the body or um that well there's a very unique connection and it depends on the person mentally if uh if you make yourself go through something mental stress like like these high performance athletes these pro athletes whether you're football, basketball, bodybuilder, if you're at the elite level, they're there for a reason. And I, I really think that uh, mentally all the stress they go through, they, they also, uh, they also uh, accept and allow everything that's coming to them. So stress doesn't always have to be negative. So when, when uh, high elite athletes get, get in my room and they're on the table, they know that the level that they're at, they need the recovery as well. So their body accepts it. So they already tell in their mind, hey, we need to accept this, these treatments, whether it's massage, chiropractic care, cold plunge, cryotherapy, sauna. And it helps them recover a whole lot faster because they're already telling their body, I'm a great person in my field, so I'm going to be even better after this. The average person who doesn't believe that, who's probably climbing up the ladder, they don't let their body accept the recovery portion. And they're like, it's too painful. I don't want to go through that. You know what? I'm just going to take a rest day. And they'll, they'll probably be stagnant at home, probably lounge around. But did it really clean out the muscle tissue? Is the tissue healthy enough to take on the next, you know, training session, whether it's out on the field or in the gym? You know, that, that takes a lot of work. It's, it's difficult to be at the top of the game. It's very difficult. Mm. So you either accept both sides of the coin or if you only accept one side of the coin, which is I just love to be out on the field, you're going to find yourself in a bad spot, you know, sooner rather than later. Do, do you, have you seen that that regular mental stress can cause muscle tightness and and sort of go on to be uh, uh, restricting how your body moves as well? Just just like mental stress. Yeah, alone. mental stress alone, absolutely. And mental stress can cause scar tissue in the muscle as really? well. Mental stress, psychological stress, chemical stress, uh, all this, all this kind of stuff, um, you know, sensory stress. Like, let's say you're at a computer monitor and your eyes are just burned out because you've been looking at the screen for 12 hours. All this can cause fibrotic tissue inside muscle fibers. It can, and and then how when, does it do that? Then? Do you, oh, right? it's the body recognizes stress in a certain way. So it all de it all depends on your lifestyle. So it it. And uh, let's say you're stagnant for a while. Let's say you're at a desk all day. And I, I give this analogy to a lot of other massage therapists who like want to have one-on-one -on -one live chats with me. I'm like, let's say somebody came in, you have three clients and they all have the exact same shoulder issue, the exact same. And they're like, I can't raise my arm up in the air. And they describe it all the same. One, one, one person is in an office, they're stagnant all day working at their desk. One person is a high performance athlete in a gym. So they only do a lot of compound movements, explosive movements. And let's just say one person is semi-active, but their eating habit is not up to par. You know, they eat burgers and pizzas, but you know, they'll, they'll go on for a run. So they're semi. 
you can't treat all of them the same. You can't say, hey, I know this technique of massage is going to unlock the shoulder. I know this modality saying, hey, I know that if I work here, it's going to unlock the shoulder. Somebody who's stagnant, you're going to find out that uh, certain muscle groups are overactive or underactive. The person who is uh, doing performance training in a gym, you might find that assisted muscle groups or synergistic muscle groups are overactive, which is causing a main muscle to be inactive, flaccid. And then you go to a person who's semi-active, but um, their eating habit isn't that great, and they're not even drinking that much water, but it's kind of okay. They're just the average Joe. The tissue feels different because it's just unhealthy. So then all that, different types of mental stress that they're all going through will determine how the muscle tissue feels. They all have a different... Um, feel to it. Some might feel very grainy and gritty. Some might feel very lumpy. Some feels like they got like marbles in their in their muscle tissue and you're like, what is that? So, and that that is how scar tissue, fibrotic tissue starts forming and embedding itself in muscle tissue to take on the lifestyle that you've created for yourself. Mm. You know, I live in the office, you know, 80 hours a week. No, I live in the gym, you know, twice a day, seven days a week. No, I just kind of wander through life and, you know, I kind of eat my burgers when I want and yeah, I like to drink a lot of soda. So how does those, if, if you take that beginning, okay, you know, like the, 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 say the stressed office person, you take, they're starting to get some scars. Take, accelerate that for five, 10 years. Like what, what does that eventually become if left unattended or if they don't change their lifestyle where, where does where, where do you where does that end up does that get um, I mean, worse and i mean you could have high blood pressure you can pre-diabetic one thing that i see is a, a lot of joint pain a lot of joint pain is gonna occur maybe fixation in certain muscle groups where things just don't seem normal anymore you know just like laying in bed going to bed it's painful and then you wake up in more pain things like that so one thing that i just noticed right away is um pain and more attachment points where the muscle turns into the tendon that attaches to the bone that's where it starts to tax itself more and it's the body just telling you like hey we're going downhill and uh these are all like they're all like check engine lights you know, to yourself saying, we need a, you, this is an alert. We need to tell you the body is very unique. It tells you what's wrong with you all the time, all the time. And if you don't fix it, give it a few years, it, it might be worse. What happens with muscle tissue alone is you're going to start to create, um, like muscle disformities that pull on bones. And if you look at people's gait assessment, you know, and as people approach like 40, 50, and, you know, some might be very hunched back or they might have one shoulder lifted, but to them, they feel normal. Mm -hmm. The body said, hey, we're accepting this. So it has to reconstruct different neurons to say, okay, we're going to shut that off. Because you will go through a pain period. Your body will start to conform and configure to a certain way. And then eventually the body will shut off certain neurons of pain that says, we don't feel pain at here no more. We're good. And it's like, yeah, I've had this for a while, but it's not painful. I can still do whatever I want. And then when somebody touches it, external pressure, then they're going to feel it. But and, internally they won't. And is it, so is it, is it starting to, to disfigure? I'll use that word, but like yeah. based on tightness and looseness and, and lack of nerve, um, recognition, nerves picking up certain things, and and is, is it then sort of changing it? So okay, it, it's accommodated the, the short term pain, but now it's creating a, a total imbalance that, that you, you've you've then got to constantly com compensate for. I get yeah. like like Jenga, I suppose. You know, you take one of the things <laughs> out, and you kind of have to yeah mess it all. Up. <laughs> no, it's it's a very yeah it it happens a lot, and it's something that we call cross body syndrome. Right. You know, like when, let's say, the right shoulder's attacked and, you know, a couple of years go by, next thing you know, you have left hip pain, you know, and you don't know why. You're like, nothing's happened. I don't know. Like, I don't, it just started hurting me. 
but you, you start noticing the imbalances. And again, th this is all things that I s notice through the lens of a massage therapist. Uh, chiropractors might see we're very similar in some ways. Our knowledge kind of cross paths. What's the difference between those two? Uh, well, they work with bones okay. and I work with muscle tissue. So, but every muscle attaches to a bone and no bone can move without muscle activation. So our, our knowledge somewhat cross paths, but they're extremely knowledgeable on uh, the bone structure mm. and if bones are out of alignment. So should you do, do you, do you have a massage therapist and a chiropractor or do you start with the muscles and then hopefully that the bones start to take care of themselves? Um, without upsetting any chiropractors. But. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I really don't think one, uh, one trumps the other if you're just gonna start out. You know, I don't think it's it's gonna be bad if you start on one and not the other. Um, but I wish more chiropractors would say, hey, we kind of realigned you, so why don't you go get a massage to relax those muscle groups again? Because even though the realignment started and it happened, the aggravated muscle tissues are saying, we don't like to be here. <laughs> No, this is a, we, you've kept us over here for the last four years and they're gonna start to creep back up together and tighten it and it's gonna pull that joint back away. And then people find themselves going to chiropractors three times a week. And yeah. I've seen it many times yeah, I've where, done it myself. where yeah. chiropractors say, hey, I need to see you three times a week and you know, for the next six months. And that I don't believe is healthy in any way. Uh, just getting realignment, realignment, realignment. Um, if we very, we complement each other very well. So, you know, both the skeletal system and the muscles have to play a very intricate role together. With, with muscles, you may, I, I guess that if there is an issue, do, do, does it create some sort of inflammation as well if it's not in the correct position? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's a, and the inflammation, that's a, that's a very broad word and it can happen yeah. in many different ways. Like I said, some people can start feeling a chronic pain. Some people start feeling like numbness or maybe pins and needles. Some people start feeling burning sensations. And the, when a muscle gets in that tight feeling, it starts to pinch off nerve branches. Pinch? Yeah. So you have the whole nervous system runs through all the muscle fibers. And if one gets inflamed too much, then it starts to just kind of choke off and pinch certain nerves. And then you start feeling all these symptoms in all your extremities and you don't know why. And you're like, I don't know what's going on, you know, but it can happen in the very minute way, you know, so. What about blood flow and oxygen then? If you've got, if you have that inflammation, does it affect the getting blood flow and nutrients and oxygen to all of the muscles in an equally equal balanced way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blood flow is so important, extremely important. Um, so yeah, I mean, you got to remember you have red blood cells and this blood flow that you that flows through the body second to second carries everything that you need for you to stay alive. All the nutrient breakdown, you know, oxygen level consumption, it disperses everything, glucose, all that. It filters to organs, heart, lungs. So if certain muscle groups get too tight and too stressed out, it's almost like, um, I like to think of it as a, as a car wreck on a freeway. You know, if there's a massive car wreck and red blood cells can get corroded and just start to clog certain, certain pathways. And then next thing you know, levels just start to deplete. And this is like what that machine that you were describing about earlier can read. And next thing you know, oxygen levels start to deplete in that muscle group, and then it turns hypoxic. And that's, you know, it starts to harden. And you can just tell uh, uh, a tight muscle and a muscle that's hypoxic has two different muscle vibrations. So you have to understand one from the other. So, um, but yeah, so blood flow is extremely important and massage can really help clean all that out because massage not only not only does it activate good blood flow and cleans all that corrosion out of red blood cells but it also activates an abundance of white blood cells 
and you know, red blood cells is what it is, but white blood cells, you have, I believe, three or four different type of white blood cells, and it cleans the body out depending on what it's going on, whether it's a virus, whether it's fibrotic tissue, you know, uh, whether it's a uh, fungal infection. It, it has white blood cells that clean out everything. So massage therapy, not only, you know, it brings a lot of that blood flow in, but it also cleans and detoxifies muscle tissue. Coming up next. Just in general, I believe one massage a month uh, like a one hour treatment or an hour and a half treatment, once a month I believe is, is perfect. Massage guns, um, I have one here in the torture room, I think are very good to promote blood flow. Some people carry muscle knots around for years, and I'm talking 10, 15, 20 years. Wow. Stretching can help you out so much. And uh, I'm a big advocate of yoga. I do yoga like four times a week. I think everybody should do yoga. We can bring an extra inch thickness to the chest yeah. just through massage. I want the whole world to know who I am. If you, if you leave the muscles for too long where it's damaged the nerves and damaged the blood flow, like can, can it be rehabilitated even if you've left them for a long time? Or did, did I, do you, can you do permanent damage if, if you don't keep an eye on that sort of thing? I believe the only permanent damage that can be done if it's left alone is um, a muscle atrophy. And once you start losing muscle, it's kind of hard to get that back. But before it gets there, can it be reversed? Can you fix that? Even if, let's say, it's been 10 years, yes, you can. It just takes time. And that's the one thing that it's, it's like the biggest thing that I would say the biggest pet peeve of mine in massage therapy, somebody will be like, I've, I haven't got a massage in eight years. I have all these problems. And uh, you know, they, they expect a miracle session in 60 minutes. <laughs> that I'm like, I can't, I can't erase eight years of damaged time in 60 minutes. Again, if I could, uh, I'd be a billionaire. But um, so I, I try, that's why I talk to a lot of my clients. I'm like, how long has this been going on? What's it feel like? Is it, you know, I, I want to get a feel for their whole day. And uh, I try to show them it's possible to get you where you want to be. Sometimes not always 100%, but even 80% is better than zero. But you have to give me time. And people can start seeing real progress in between three to five sessions, even if something has been going on for, let's just say, eight years. What's the recommended, I'll call it dosage of, of for, for general um, staying on, staying in, in decent shape. I used to have it, I was telling you, I had this lady used to come around, extremely painful, a little bit, sounds a bit like you, a female version actually. <laughs> Looks a bit like a female version of you. Um, but it, it was great and I did it for, uh, my wife and I did it for a period of time and, and I noticed that I just moved a lot better. It helped with my back instantly, yeah. whatever she was doing. Um, but then we stopped. Um, so, so how would you recommend uh, to, to stay on top of, of things, whether you're an athlete or, or not, is there, is there something that you think is, a, is good to, to, to sort of keep up with? Um, I believe so. And just in general, I believe one massage a month, uh, like a one hour treatment or an hour and a half treatment, once a month I believe is, is perfect. I think that's where people should really be. Once you start getting into the higher, you know, uh, active people, people who let's say who go to the gym five, six times a week, they might need a little bit more. Um, you know, people who are at the elite level of their field. And we're not only talking athletes, we're talking even businessmen, you know, like to get massages maybe once a week, you know, just to eliminate the stress, you know. And I think of it more like a car, you know. You can just drive in the city and, you know, you can do maintenance when it's required. But if you like to do a lot of road trips, uh, you might have to do a few more additional, you know, tune-ups in your car where, you know, check the oil, you know, things like that. So bring it in for maintenance a little bit more frequently. What do you recommend if you've been on a, on a long flight? Because you're a bit dehydrated, you've been sat down for a long time. I guess the, the air pressure's a bit weird up there. Yeah. How, how, what do you recommend after someone's got back from something like that? Get a nice good meal, hydrate, and go for a walk something that simple. The body just needs to move and blood flow needs to start going again. So you don't need a massage, not unless 
you have something prior to that, like, you know, um, you've had a previous injury that sitting down for, let's just say, a seven hour flight causes low back pain, that it's very excruciating. But other than that, if it's just general tightness and you've been in a long flight, just get a good meal in you, drink some water and go on like a, a 20 minute walk. You'll feel better again. It's that easy. There's a lot of popular tools massage guns foam rollers where where do you <laughs> sit on on that <laughs> uh foam rollers um even though i own one i think is probably one of the dumbest inventions that made somebody a millionaire um uh, only be o- only because only very few people that I've came across only use it for its true purpose, where you have to, you actually have to use a foam roller for about 20, 25 minutes. It, when, I, when I go out to the gym floor and I see people using a foam roller, they might use it for like a minute and a half and they're like, all right, we're, we're ready to go. It really didn't do anything for you, but you'll buy one and you'll use it for like a minute on each muscle. That didn't do anything for you. Um, massage guns, um, I have one here in the torture room. I think are very good to promote blood flow. So as far as like, let's say you have a muscle knot that's just won't go away, a massage gun's not gonna, not gonna take care of it. A massage gun, it's, uh, it's actually a treatment called tapotment. And what it does is it's just supposed to bring an abundance of blood flow to a certain area. So that's why people who are um, like runners, um, things like that, sprinters, They'll, they'll always have a massage gun with them um, in, in their little gym bag when they go out to the track. And you'll, they'll use it on their calves and on their feet and on their quads because it's bringing so much blood flow. And to run or do a big sprint, you need that blood flow in there because uh, if you run like that with um, – if you pr- do a performance like that with a muscle that's not warmed up or good blood flow, you're going you're gonna to tear a hamstring or something on the quad. So it's just abundant like that. So – and what did you say foam rollers are really are intended for then is, uh, in your in your mind just just longer duration is it or well longer duration but um it's good for tight muscle groups that's what it's good for it's good for tight muscle groups when you're when you're feeling restricted a little bit the muscle doesn't have as much pliability you know it gives the body the illusion that it's getting some kind of deep tissue massage but you have to use it for a while i think 20 to 25 minutes is a good time um, per, know, per muscle you... per, per muscle group right. you know like wow. the inner thigh the quads the hamstring i have seen a few athletes here in the gym floor that have used a foam roller for almost an hour and let me tell you those athletes are never in the torture room saying they're in pain <laughs> so they, they can train very good, you know, their, their performance is very well, and they use that foam roller almost every training session. So, but the, but the, the difference is that it, to really get the effects, you, you've got to work on it quite, quite some time. Yeah, you have to. Muscle, releasing muscle tension isn't a quick fix. It can't happen in just two minutes. It can't. You know, the muscle got tight or it got in its... It got in its environment that way for a reason. And it's not going to change like that. It doesn't have a mind where it just changes and says, okay, we're good. You know, it's been, I give up. We'll do whatever you need to. We'll tighten back up later. No, it doesn't do that. So it need, you need to give it time to relax and say, okay, we're going to relax a little bit. And this is what goes into the theory behind, mus- behind the torture room of understanding muscle vibration. What are some of the tools that you enjoy uh, using in in the torture room and you've got a you've got a few toolkit things behind you yeah i have a bunch of torture tools in here <laughs> so i i love gua sha so i got certified in gua sha that what was, is what is that and gua sha is a form of muscle scraping and it's a it's an ancient chinese method mostly used and was designed you know thousands of years ago to just get rid of negative energy in the body it was all based on energy at the time. Now, as you know, science has evolved, we found out you know, the true effects it really does and what happens to the body when it's being performed on somebody. And you can do gua sha with like metal tools, steel tools, stone, bone, and I have an abundance of all those tools. I think I have like 25 different tools here. So some look scary and uh, some not so scary, but yeah. And with, with those tools then, are they, 
Is there so many different ones because they work specifically for different muscle groups? Is that why they're different? Uh, no, they're different because they all weigh differently. So the density and weight of each tool determines on the vibration of how deep it goes into muscle tissue. So not everything is always superficial. So at times people can have scar tissue embedded deep inside muscle fibers that we need to get a little bit deeper, that just doing a basic deep tissue massage isn't gonna cut it. So um, the scraping tools that I have that are a lot heavier can really clean that fibrotic tissue out. And then I have some that are stone, and that's very superficial, because there are times where the muscle is really not the problem, it's the fascia. And I speak about this a lot with a lot of my clients. I first like to read what fascia is doing. And fascia then lets the muscle know what it needs to do. So, Talk to me about fascia. I know there's been a lot of recent discoveries about fascia and what it does, things that not too many years ago we didn't even know. I, I, I did an interview with a guy called Bill Parisi. I don't know if you know Bill, but he, he was telling me the story how they just thought it was this stuff when they were cutting bodies open, they were just discarding it and just thought it had nothing. And now suddenly they realize it's, it, it's amazing. So what, 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 are, what have you learned about fascia and how do you use that in, in the work you do? In, in massage therapy? See, fascia is very unique. It's a very unique organ and it's one of the biggest organs we have in our whole body. And if you ever look at fascia on a cadaver, and it's probably why you said people they were just discarding it, it kind of looks like cotton candy, if, if I had to describe it in a certain way. It moves, it's very pliable. But the very unique thing about fascia is fascia carries nine different sensory receptors. That's all it does, it's, it's a sensory organ. Nine different ones, so that deciphers everything you're going through. Your environment, your external environment, what you're putting your body through, the the exercise, the long hours at work, sitting down on a plane for, and when you start feeling all these aches and pains, fascia is reading all these, it's sending all these sensory receptors to muscle tissue and tendons. And, and it's telling the body, hey, we don't like this. And, and then from there, it starts to send off different hormones to two different tissues of the body to say, hey, uh, we, it's like the body's defense mode. But fascia reads your environment. It lets you know what's going on. And it's a, it, knowing that it's, it's sensory as well, it also allows you to understand if you're in cold environment, hot environment, you know, why you're sweating all the time. It lets you know all these things. So, but when you, when I start working with people, I, I like to start from the top and work my way down. So fascia is the very first thing. And sometimes you can just say, hey, um, the muscle's fine. It's the fascia. The fascia is starting to cause adhesions. And that you can tell it has a very distinct, unique feeling. It feels like sandpaper. Well, the, when you feel into the muscle, it feels yeah, like it, sandpaper. The second you start touching somebody, the minute I start feeling sandpaper, almost gritty, like fine grains of sand in there, I automatically know it's fascia. So we clean that out. Once we, once that gets cleaned out. How do, when you say you clean it out, what are you doing? You're, you're smoothing it, you're breaking it up? What? Yeah, fascia, fascia can, can smooth out in seconds. It's not something that's a very long process. Uh, not like muscle tissue, because muscle tissue has a sensory nerve and a motor nerve. So it's working on two different engines, you can say where fascia is just all sensory and knowing that it's very pliable and it's all collagen. So as soon as it gets warmed up, it can, you can then start to roll it out and smooth it out. And then, it, and then that's going to expose what's going on with the muscle. Then the muscle finally says, hey, you know, we've been hurting for a while, man. Like, um, you know, we're all knotted up. And knots are a totally other different thing with muscle tissue, or it says, hey, we have a lot of junk here. You know, we need to get this stuff cleaned out because it's just been stuck here because the fascia is not letting us roll it all out of here. So, so you, you can, generally have to deal with fascia before you can deal with the muscle then, is that typical? Uh, sometimes, not all the time. Um, like with muscle knots, especially if they're very distinct, um, muscle knot is, um, you can go directly to a muscle knot, and that's a motor nerve dysfunction in the muscle tissue. 
So, and that's, that's and what, what, what does that mean? It means it's fire, it's firing the muscle, is it? And it's in a kind of contracted state somehow. Mm -hmm. So, so the way muscle knots form, and this is a very, very unique way, but if you can understand it, it's, it's, it's very easy to decipher, at least for me it is. So you have one muscle group. Give me, let's choose a muscle just to... Let's, uh, let's say the quad. You, okay. have, you, have four different, you have four different muscles here, but you have a muscle knot that's right here on this outside quad. Now this outside quad alone, if you saw it alone, has thousands upon hundreds of thousands of muscle fibers, muscle fibers. So when you create an action, all muscle fibers work as one. And fascia lets you know exactly what environment you're in. So let's just say you're doing a squat. It knows that you only have 100 pounds on the squat bar, and now you have 200, and now you have 300. It automatically sends sensory receptors to that, to all the quads, to say, hey, we need to tighten this way. And then when we perform the action, we need to contract a certain way. So. But when the muscle gets too traumatized, when it hits a barrier where it says, yo, we hit our max, this is it. Certain muscle fibers, because they all work together, let's just say you have 100,000 muscle fibers in just this outside quad, and you taxed it way past its limit. They all have to work together, but when a muscle knot forms, let's just say 10% of those in a very localized area let's just say 10,000 muscle, muscle, and just one localized area, still believes it's in action. The rest of the crew, the other, you know, 990,000 fibers, they all said, hey, dude, we're done. We don't have 800 pounds on, on our back no more. We're done. We're good. You can relax. And they, they have to work together. Um, so, but some muscle fibers get traumatized too much that it still believes it's in action, so it's contracting and it stays hard in that way. And even if you try to stretch it out, it feels like a big lump. The, the muscle tissue says, no, we're, we still believe we're in action. So the motor nerve is hyperactive and it's saying we need to contract and it shortens that tissue and, it, and it, it's very bumpy, it's very distinct. And that's a very distinct feeling of fibrotic tissue. And is that easy to, how do you, how do you then release that then? Just massage, um, yeah. That's a, very, that's a very good question. I'm glad you brought that up because this is where my torture room theory comes out under muscle vibration. And that's how I learned massage is understanding vibration. Is if I realize, I, one thing I realize is since muscle has a certain tone at any given time, that tone is traumatized. That muscle tissue is traumatized. So it's sitting at a different vibration. So what I've learned to discover is if I can match that traumatized muscle vibration with external pressure, then we start playing a role of energy. And one thing that happens when a muscle knot that is very traumatized and it's carrying a certain vibration, and as soon as I match it with its own energy, it starts to poke itself at me. It says, hey, what are you doing here? It really does. It, it plays, it, we start playing this game of like, hey, I'm here. And it's like, you're not supposed to be here. I'm working. And it's like, no, I'm here. And eventually, give it a few seconds, you know, you bring some more blood flow in there, get back on it. Eventually, it starts to relax itself. Eventually, it says, hey, we don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. Because when it meets its own energy externally, it's foreign energy to the traumatized muscle. And then it's like, well, we both can't occupy the same. So it's gonna give up a lot faster than I will. And that's how it that's how that's how I get rid of muscle knots. And is did do you have to so I guess you're you're a pretty big guy. Does does some of that come down to the ability of the amount of so did, does that come to sort of strength and being able to put uh, that energy back into it? Do you have to have a certain amount of um, um, I don't believe you need to have a certain amount of strength. I think it's it's almost a very delicate role of energy. Like the the, the a muscle knot will tell you in seconds uh, when when you when you met its match. 
when it, it tells you don't have to be on there for like five minutes and being like, I don't know what's going on with this knot. I don't know. And I see a lot of other massage therapists who are just dropping elbows saying, hey, we're just going to just beat this thing like with a bat. <laughs> and it's like, could you do that? Yes. I mean, do a lot of people do it? Obviously, I like to get very pinpoint on the muscle fibers itself and understand where it's at. And within seconds, and I mean under five seconds, that muscle will just start poking. And it's like, hey, why? what are you doing here? And it's very unique. And I love that feeling. And uh, I always let my clients know, I'm like, that's where it's at. That's what we're going to work on. So let's just bring some more blood flow in here. Let's, you know, and then uh, let's start working on this. And after a few minutes, um, it kind of goes away. It might take anywhere between, I don't know, five, six minutes. If it's something that's been embedded in there, you can actually feel it and see it get smaller and smaller. And there's times where I have to say, hey, this is as far as we can go. And, um, you know, at your next session, we're going to reassess that tissue all over again. And hopefully that that muscle knot didn't come back even bigger or back to its normal size. And we should be able to take it away in about two, three sessions. So because some knots have been some people carry muscle knots around for years. And I'm talking 10, 15, 20 years. And that I can tell as soon as someone either takes their shirt off like as soon as they take their shot, I can already tell. And I'm like, man, this is gonna, it's gonna be one of those days. <laughs> it's like- uh, Do you think we're all carrying, you, unless they have regular treatments for someone like yourself, do you think a lot of us are, are carrying those around without really being aware of it? Um, I, yes, but um, probably not to the point where it's very traumatic to you. Mm-hmm. You know, you're gonna feel it when you start feeling chronic tension you're not feeling a lot of pain. Nothing's painful. It's just tension and it's chronic. And you're like, I don't know why, but it just feels uncomfortable. That's when you know muscle knots are starting to form. And when it does that and it stays there for years, that's when you're going to start having like structural disformities. And, uh, you know, from there, it's you roll the dice. Everybody's life is different. So what are some of the common things that you get people coming in consistently, whether they're athletes or, or not? Uh, tight neck and uh, messed up shoulders. Yeah, shoulders and neck. Shoulder, our shoulder joint is, is our most mobile joint. And, um, you know, if people realize what actually makes that shoulder joint move, and it has two joints, it's not just one. You have the AC joint, and then you have a glenohumeral joint. Uh, one is where the clavicle meets up to the shoulder blade, and one is where the arm, the humerus, meets up to the to the shoulder blade. And from there, you have muscles from the front of you that attach to the shoulder blade. You have muscles in your neck that attach to the shoulder blade. You have muscles in your elbow that attach to the shoulder blade. You have muscles from your sacrum, posterior chain, your very low back, your sacrum, that attaches to your shoulder blade. Um, you have muscles from the lumbar vertebrae that attach to the shoulder blade. You have muscles from the neck, the cervical vertebrae that attaches to the shoulder blade. And that's just the most external muscles. Then you have muscles from the rib cage. And um, the shoulder joint is, it's a very unique joint and it lets you take on so much torque and tension. And um, so people come in with shoulder issues all the time. And that will then create neck tension, headaches. Um, so those are the two most common, neck and shoulders. It's a, it's a puzzle. Yeah, I bet like sometimes if I, I don't have headaches a lot, but sometimes I get them and I wonder what they are. And then a lot of cases, if I sort of stretch and stuff, it generally is because something's tightened here and it gives me the feeling that I've got a headache. But... I kind of move and stretch and everything. And I can normally get rid of it through yeah. something. I, yeah. I guess nowadays with the computers, they, they've got, a t- what do they call it, tech neck. Yeah. Uh, people are, I even yeah. say it to my kids, you know, like just <laughs> put your head up. Uh, I think, do, do you think, are you, are you seeing more people nowadays just because of the phones and that, that we're, you know, we're all looking down really, aren't we, in a lot yeah. of cases. Do, do, do you think that's kind of creating I mean, more it, issues? It, it is creating more issues and it's something nobody foresaw. Even office jobs, nobody foresaw, you know, people having all these like hip and low back issues. That's why there's all these ergonomic desks. But 
if there's one thing I want to point out is people downplay stretching. Stretching can help you out so much. And uh, I'm a big advocate of yoga. I do yoga like four times a week. And it's one thing that yogis have have proven time and time again is if you can actually stretch for average 15, 20 minutes a day with controlled breathing, and a lot of people sometimes will get into deep stretches and hold their breath, but no, try to learn how to have nice controlled breathing even during deep stretches. It actually releases fascia tension. When you release fascia tension, then that promotes more blood flow that more blood flow is going to relax muscle tissue. So it all plays a role. And just minor stretching, that can go so long. It can go so far and it can help you out so much and it can prevent you from injury, prevent from headaches going on, prevent from range of motion limitations. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I ask just about every client that walks in here, like, how often are you stretching? And I, I always ask this because... 90% of my clientele are athletes now. And that wasn't the case when I started the torch room. I didn't want to just work with athletes, but knowing that that's where I'm at at the moment, I ask them, how, how often are you stretching? And they're like, zero. And let me tell you, 95% of athletes don't do stretching. The elite 5% have somebody stretch them. Or some of them say, hey, I like to do stretching on my own. But in generalities, nobody stretches. Nobody. When do you recommend doing it though? Before workout, after workout, or just independently of it? Um, I don't believe stretching has a certain benefit if you do it right before or right after. I still believe if you stretch like let's say seven o'clock in the morning, but you're gonna get a 4 p.m. workout session, that stretching session will still benefit you in the workout. A lot of people might disagree with me, but I don't believe so. But um, I'm, I'm saying this just by um, my own experience, I do yoga early in the morning and we're talking like 5 a.m. And when I get a training session in, it's usually past 6 p.m. And I still have some of the best workouts. Are there any, if you had to, to choose four or five really important things that you can stretch, what, what would you say um, are, are the sort of go-to ones that solve a lot of the issues? Um, stretch that help decompress the spine hip opening stretches, stretching the adductors, the inner thigh, um, just doing shoulder mobility stretches, you know, muscle rotations in the shoulder, and then stretching out the neck, just doing nice, you know, shoulder rotations, things like that, but mostly the spine. If you dedicated more time to stretching the back and decompressing the spine, everything else is gonna fall into place. Would this, you use a ball to do that, like a physio ball at all? Um, it can be used, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I think if you do yoga, I think everybody should do yoga. <laughs> I think that is, I think yoga, yoga kind of saved my life a little bit um, to the point where, it, you know, I wasn't able to do my job for a while. And yoga, somebody turned me to yoga and uh, again, I was like, man, that's stupid. I'm going to do yoga. Why would I do that? I was very, I was very hard-headed back in the day. But now I'm very open and, um, to things. And uh, so when somebody told me about yoga, um, just because I have a previous spinal injury, where I ruptured, I ruptured four discs in my low back, and the bones ended up fusing together. So I was in extremely a lot of pain. And I was on a lot of pain meds. And uh, somebody turned me to yoga. And I was like, I don't think this is good. This is stupid. But just like everything else, it's not going to get fixed in one session, one time. But I had to start yoga with 10 minutes and then 20 minutes and then 30 minutes. I can do yoga now for an hour. But I only do 30 minutes now, four times a week. And I mostly do it to help decompress the spine, relax the, the muscles in the back, all those paraspinal muscles. And it really does help with all your extremities because the entire nervous system is, is the root of all nervous system is on the spine. So once you can relax that, and we're not just talking muscles, we're talking fascia, we're talking decompressions of the vertebrae, and then the nervous system there has, has room to, to send neurons correctly, then everything else in the extremities just works really, really well. And then you, you even get more clarity in your thought process. So this is why I think yogis were very, 
very unique with discovering what stretching and controlled breathing can do, not only for fascia, but for the muscle tissue itself. Mm. Yeah. What about, is there diet or liquids? You mentioned water before. Is there, is there any other things that, that complement a routine of yoga, massage? What, 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 what do you think on the sort of food and drink side? Food and drinks. I mean, water is always the best. I mean, I'm a Gatorade drinker. I love Gatorade. I, although I do the zero, the zero sugar Gatorade. So um, I do that just for the carb purposes. Um, but you know, definitely soda. You got to stay away from soda. That's just not good for you in any way. Um, do you think we? Do you think? Do you see people that are, are generally dehydrated? Um, and does that cause issues? Yes. Yes, uh, dehydration. I mean, that's really going into the medical portion of the human body, which, you know, I don't excel in all that information there. But, dude, if you're dehydrated, things are not moving well. Red blood cells are not going to filter all the nutrients it needs to send to all tissue muscle tissue, skeletal muscle tissue, the soft tissue, you know, cardiac muscles. You know, it's not going to, it's not going to, transfer it very well so if, if you're lacking in water um you know i can usually tell when somebody just a coffee drinker i meet people who drink like freaking 15 cups of coffee a day and i'm like do you drink any water today and they're like i had like a glass this morning that's why i'm not a water drinker so there are a lot of people who hate to drink water and you can tell their muscle has a certain tone to it a certain feeling it's almost like a coating shell that won't it almost feels like it's just gonna break. It's like, and they're very hypersensitive to touch, hmm. you know, and they're like, everything hurts them. And I'm like, dude, it, it, just a little bit of water, quit all the coffee. And there's some people that only drink sodas all the time. And they're yeah, I'm like, I mean, that I'm just going off the physical reality of when I go through palpation, but what happens internally, you know, hormone levels and your pH levels and, you know, your your diet, the gut biome, all that is going to tell the body to, hey, we're all inflamed now, we're stressed. And then add activity onto that. And it doesn't even have to be physical activity. It could be like, hey, I'm a truck driver. You know, I, I drive 12 hours a day. You know, you, you know, you might get some edema, you know, some neuropathy, you know, um, you just never know. Every, everybody's there. And I, this is one reason why I love massage therapy is because every person is so different. There's no symptom A goes with treatment A and it's always going to be absolute. Nothing is absolute in, in the healthcare field. And the worst part about this is if you had a room full of healthcare professionals, me, massage therapist, a chiropractor, a physical therapist, a, um, a pain management doc, a surgeon, you know, and you had all of us in one room, we'd all contradict each other. We would all say no, we'd all say that's not true, but that's just because we're looking at the human body through a certain lens, where a surgeon might say, hey, this is what's going on with the body, I can fix it, it's absolute, and it's, it's in its own reality. Um, a, you know, a chiropractor say, hey, this bone is out of alignment. I can just twist it and then we're back. You know, um, a physical therapist, they're very, very in tune with the kinesiology of the body. They can read which muscles are overactive or underactive, which muscles need to be worked on, like assisted muscle groups to help stabilize joints. You know, so, you know, they, they're very knowledgeable with the kinesiology of the body. I just understand the state of muscle tissue and say, hey, it just needs to be healthy so you can keep creating action day to day in whatever it is you want to do in life. See the weight difference? Oh, wow, yeah. Now feel this one. Oh, right. They're all very different. So they all send a different vibration through the body to help me um, relax different muscle tissue and bring pliability what happens on the flip side is it detoxifies the muscle enough and also bring enough red blood, red blood cells in there that once it filters through, 
scrape them up for a while. I let that sit for like two, three minutes, and then I can manipulate the muscle after that, oh. saying, hey, I kind of need you to move over here. You're kind of knotted up over here. Hey, you have too much scar tissue, let's clean it out. And then I can start manipulating the muscle. And that only goes through pain and symptoms. When you deal with guys like Jay Cutler's, these pro bodybuilders, now, yeah, they have a lot of joint issues because of the, the muscle that they carry every day and the sheer weight that they use. But what happens when they're 30 days out from actually walking on stage, now we have to manipulate the muscle. And a gentleman by Derek Farnsworth told me this one day when he's the one that told me to understand fascia. And he's a very good massage therapist out of San Diego. You can start manipulating muscle tissue to lay differently. And I confirmed this with Jay. And I was like, is this really true? And he's like, you can actually bring, you know, their back looks wide already. You can bring an extra inch or two to their back wow. and make it look even wider. Really? Um, I think the massage therapist that was working with Jay brought an extra three inch width on his shoulders. And then we can even start carving the, the details inside the quads to make them pop even right. more. So there's an aesthetic side of massage therapy where you don't deal with pain and symptoms. They might have some pain or they might have like, dude, it's kind of, this joint is kind of iffy, but guess what? I can't traumatize the muscle because they need to walk on stage and they can't look bruised up. So we're gonna work on just relaxing the tissue and I would do that through um, cross fiber friction or trigger point therapy closer to a joint. Because when, when you can relax a tendon, it will relax the muscle it's attached to. But when you do that, now you can start molding the muscle and what you want it to do. Even the chest, we can bring an extra inch thickness to the chest Gee. just through massage. I actually had this discussion with a, with a doctor in Nashville one day. And he was like, how did you know to do that? And I was like, well, I didn't know to do that, but somebody I talked to said they were doing it like 20 years ago. And using certain tools, I've learned to, again, sculpt. again, understand the vibration of fascia and muscle that I can start molding it and getting it to move and bring more volume and let those muscle fibers just expand more. Wow. And as, you know, obviously 30 days out, these these pro bodybuilders they're not benching 500 pounds they're doing lighter weight more volume so if you can open up and dilate those those muscle fibers they can push more blood and it stays thicker longer and um, you know once it's all they just need to look perfect for a day mm -hmm. so there's a whole aesthetic side of massage therapy that can be done that only very very few people in the world do and i've talked to other massage therapists they're like that's not for real I'm like, well, you don't know this because you don't work on the Jay Cutlers and the Nick Walkers and the Andrew Jack. You don't have a 300 pound guy on your table every day. You, don't, you know, when someone says, hey, can you make my chest look bigger? It's like, yeah, it's going to be painful, but yeah, we can do it. Because <laughs> then you have to start, you know, they, this is like a human anatomy chart when these guys are this lean, but you can start peeling up that pec major and you can scrape all that scar tissue underneath the muscle and then start stretching that pec out. And next thing you know, as they pump up, that muscle just got an extra inch in volume. Wow. And we can do that even with the quads too. We did this with Missy Truscott, her X-frame, when she brings her shoulders out, when she stands on stage, it's freaking wide. And every session I do with her, we stretch out those shoulder blades and we release muscle tension and it's very painful. And she's like, oh my God, I don't wanna do this. But then when she's done, she's like, Whew. shoulder blades. When the shoulder blade can move, when you free those up, every muscle attached, and we talked about all the muscles that attach to the shoulder blade, that allows all the muscles just to start moving outward because they make the, they learn how to pose by moving the bones. So it's uh, working with bodybuilders, is, it's very unique that, um, I, it's enhanced my skill even more. Mm. Now, there's no reason to do this kind of s treatment to like, uh, you know, the dentist, you know, <laughs> that's right. that's like, you know, they just said, so I have to learn. That's why I took a very, when I was, when I was re rebranding myself and said, I have to go back to basics. I, that's why I wanted to learn what's, 
what can the human body really do? And uh, you know this, of course, talking to many people all over, that uh, people can people can do so many unique things that you're like, how the hell did you do this? You know, David Goggins, how could he run for hundreds of miles when people say that that's impossible? You know, he's a true testament of how mental strength mm -hmm. can really push the body. So you know you can unlock things in the human body. And if you can unlock things, there's more potential to be found. So I learned this through massage as well. I only stick with my career. I love massage so much that I not only wanted to treat pain and symptoms, but I also wanted to understand why muscle reacts a certain way. Um, why won't it move? Why does it get fixated? And then also, can I make the body look a certain way? I don't think many people knew that as well. It's only very, very few people know this. Like three inches across. Yeah. That's just... That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Jay confirmed that with me when I was talking to him. I'm like, is it really true? And he's like, yeah. And he told me exactly how they did it. And I was like, dude, that just sounds painful, bro. That just sounds painful. But somebody like him can handle that. Somebody with that much muscle can handle that. If we did that technique on you, you'd be like, why are you popping my shoulder out of socket, bro? Um, but they can handle it. So um, working, with, working with pro bodybuilders has unlock the new potential in understanding the body. It's understanding the muscle tissue and how it holds the vibration. And that's when I came up with the torture room theory and which got me to open up a YouTube channel on just my theory of massage and what I like to do, how I like to approach it and um, how I understand muscle vibration, not only with pain and symptoms, range of motion limitations, the aesthetic side of massage and even how to read energy. You know, it, like when somebody, I don't have a questionnaire paperwork that I give people. I like to talk to people. I'm like, tell me what's going on. Just how they speak to me, I can understand like how painful things are or, mm -hmm. you know, the energy that they're bringing into the room. And it's another reason why I decided to really enhance my meditation skills. And I meditate under a certain frequency to, um, cause I'm very big believer in a uh, uh, frequency vibration. And you can, and I learned this by reading books on uh, Joe Dispenza, mm, Dr. Yeah, Joe, like Dr. Stuff, yeah. Joe Dispenza, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton and a monk from Hawaii called Dan Dipani. They all speak about the mind, the awareness, Dan Dupani talks about the awareness. Uh, Bruce Lipton talks about um, the communication of cells in the body and how they can um, form in any way depending on its environment. And uh, Joe Dispenza talking about, you know, quantum healing. So the energy field around how thoughts really do mm. um, hold water in the world. And uh, learning more about Joe Dispenza's teaching made me realize if if I can hold myself in certain frequency, if I can clear my mind in the morning before all the distractions happen and um, hold my body under a certain frequency, then you can create quantum healing through manipulating matter. So when vibration meets its own vibration, you can actually manipulate physical matter. And um, the Chinese have developed this and it's also the same theory of how I um, discovered how to treat muscle knots without dropping an elbow on somebody. I mean, I'm 230 pounds yeah. and- I felt your, your handshake is- <laughs> <laughs> So somebody can get a muscle knot that's only 100 pounds. I can't use the same technique. So I figured out if I can understand what's happening just to the muscle fiber that's traumatized, if I can learn the vibration, then I can learn how to manipulate matter. And that to me is exciting. Mm. That to me makes me think like, man, every hour is something new that my mind is constantly engaged. And I have to keep deciphering new ways and new possibilities to understand muscle tissue and to treat it. So someone can say, man, I've been waiting for this. I actually feel good. My biggest, my biggest case was a lady from Salt Lake who had, I think it was stage three bone cancer. 
and um, she came to me and I was like, I don't know what you think I can do for you. Like you need to, she's like, I do see doctors. She's like, I do chemo once a month. She goes, they gave me, I think they gave her like eight months to live, six to eight months to live. When I had met her, she had already breached that and was already around a year mm. after. Mm. And she was like, I wanna do massage and I wanna do this gua sha. I read about gua sha and the energy field and healing. And I was like, I just need a doctor's note. And uh, her doctor was like, I don't want you to do this. Your body is brittle, it's getting brittle. And let me tell you, till today, she's still alive. Wow. And it's now, I wanna say six years now. And um, she actually felt good. She was still having the issues. I, never did I sell her on, it's gonna cure anything. But she had this idea in her mind. She said, well, if I know I'm gonna die, I might as well do everything I wanna do now. And I'm like, what do you wanna do? She was like, I love to play tennis. I love to take my dog out for a walk. So she started getting gua sha treatments and we were scraping like her spine, her hips. And it wasn't nothing super aggressive. I wasn't traumatizing the muscle. I was more working on fascia because I knew fascia had a lot of sensory receptors. And if there's one thing that really helps, um, and you know, a lot of cancer doctors really talk about this, is you need good oxygen flow to help combat cancer, just so it doesn't shorten your life. Oxygen is the number one thing that's needed. And um, she's like, well, I can play tennis now, but I can't play very long, but I can play at least for 15, 20 minutes. She's like, the fact that I can be out with my girlfriends playing tennis for you know, 20 minutes, I'm happy. And then what, what happens when people are happy? They don't feel any pain. They're just, they're just enjoying life day by day. And you know, she, she's an amazing woman. And I'm like, man, so she, I sold her on it. And you know what? She's still around today. And she, she lives somewhere else in another state. So she found somebody else that does gua sha and helps her out. So, but she's a firm believer in energy. So it's a, so I meet a lot of unique people. It's not yeah. always the athletes, but um, that's what I really enjoy about being the torture room is that it might seem scary, but it was designed to work with every person that you could think of. The elderly, the very sick, the athletes, the person who just works 80 hours a week that's just stressed. I wanted it to be designed for everybody. So it's a hard sale. It's hard to sell torture room. So it's hard. Some people are intimidated. But uh, one guy told me one day, he said, if you can get them in your room for five minutes, you have one opportunity to sell yourself. That's all you need. So that's what I do. I take every single session as one opportunity to sell it. And uh, every session I do the best I possibly could. And um, you know what? It's got me recognized so far. Yeah. So, well, you've created a great business. You've, you've been in Vegas now for a few years. What's, what's next on your plan? What's, what, 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 are, what are your unfulfilled ambitions that you've got now, Miguel? The next plan is, um, I want the whole world to know who I am. That's the next plan. I had this vision when I created the torture room and knowing that I was rejected by so many people who said that I was no good, said that this wasn't a good career choice, people who told me that I was gonna have a difficult time. Um, even my own instructor at school told me that I was gonna have a difficult time. But after being rejected by so many people in this field, um, I have proven that the torture room theory does hold water and I've been able to acquire fans from all over the world, that, and some of them are massage therapists that want to learn this certain technique of understanding muscle vibration. So um, I had this vision of the world knowing exactly what I can do, and I want the whole world to know the torture room. I don't care if they know who I am, but I want the world to know the torture room and say, yeah, that guy was kind of crazy, but he fixed a lot of people. And what drives you for that? Oh man, my drive is knowing that I was at the bottom, knowing that I, I, I had nothing and I had nothing and people were still telling me that I was crazy for being a massage therapist. I was at the bottom of the barrel of life. No money, no home no food and um, 
knowing that that's where I started and that's where I started the torture room, I'm going to take this all over the world. That's what drives me every day. My final question then, Miguel, is Escape Your Limits is about escaping what you've believed is impossible and gone on to make possible. Outside of what we've discussed recently today, what would you say is a memorable example of escaping your own personal limits? Escaping my own personal limits is um, being open to the idea that energy is real and energy flows everywhere. And if I can understand people's energy, especially when they're very stressed energy, negative energy, I can steer them in the right way through massage therapy. So I broke that limit. And, um, you know, a lot of other massage therapists go the very clinical way. You know, whatever's written in black and white, this is what I do. This is what's written in textbooks. I have learned massage therapy through a very holistic way of understanding vibrational frequency and uh, breaking that and, and, and showing that to other people in the world um, is really breaking a limit that massage is just something that you just get on vacation. It's mm -hmm. like, dude, this is something that can really heal people, not only emotionally, but energetically and in reality, all three. Well, you've inspired me to go and get massages every month now. You want to get my, tortured? My wife's going to be very happy, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel, thank you very much for your time today. Hey, thanks for having me on here. Thanks. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you've got any value from it whatsoever, then please do us a favor, like, subscribe, tell somebody, and that will help us to be able to continue to do more of these and help you escape your own personal limits. Thanks for listening.